So in uh, this discussion, we will focus on how AI can enhance sustainable infrastructure design, optimize resource management, improve construction processes, and enable intelligent transportation system. So in this uh, meeting, we have three presenters from different society. So uh, let me start the session with the presentation by Mr. Songan Cho, the chief engineer, Sinotech uh, from Taiwan. He's a member of CICE International Affairs Committee. So uh, please welcome uh, Mr. Songan Cho with a big applause. For the past uh, 30 years, I work for Sinotech as an IT engineer. But I'm, I'm, I'm also a civil engineer. So I know the problem in construction, a paving in such a site. So we're trying to solve a lot of problems using AI technology. So that's the topic I'm going to show you. I'm going to share with you why predictive AI, there are a lot of AI, but I have limited of time, so I'm going to share about the predictive AI and the development of AI in Taiwan. We have some special situation that can enable us to make it possible to have an AI application in civil engineering. And most importantly, we have some AI use cases, which is very is practical to you. And I have conclusions. I is booming. A lot of countries are reacting. Sooner or later, you are facing problems like other countries, such as the European Union. They have an AI Act already. And in Taiwan, we are drafting the AI Basic Act. Our dream is that AI is not a, a, another thing. AI is a product that can enable us. So every industry should be AI realized. But AI is not alone. AI should be industrialized. Okay, let me go to the details. So why predictive AI? When I was a student in college, I started a lot of AI-related courses, fuzzy set, expert system, pattern recognition. I even wrote a lot of programs for then engineers in safety assessment with AI tools. But it turned out to be only a uh, a toy because engineers are the most important role to make decisions. AI can only help when people can write down the exact rules. It's a reference, it was a reference engine with a lot of rules. So it was the, the oops, sorry about that. Rule based AI in the 1990s. But for recent years, you know, everyone knows that computer can beat human in chasing, in goal. So we are surprised that a new era of AI is coming. It's <coughs> called machine learning, especially deep learning. So what computer can do is that if you input text, data, or image, you can get not only rules, you can get a prediction or classification, which will be very useful to us. <coughs> and until this year, a lot of new terminology came out. It was AIGC. AI can generate images, texts, such as chat GPT. It can answer a lot of questions. But so some of the students or engineers are thinking, well, I don't have to spend a lot of time writing thesis or something. Chat GPT can help me. So I am going to skip this part, but I'll limit my talk to computer 
AI is machine learning AI, which is uh, covered about in deep learning. Okay, so I told you that uh, it's a special situation in Taiwan. We have an Open Data Act. Oops. In 2015, government is willing to release a lot of data in machine readable format, which covers about weather, traffic, and humans, cell phone tokens, and water lake rainfall, climate, CO2, carbon dioxide. So we were even ranked number one in the global survey. You know, you must, you must know that data is the oil. Data is the new oil, not the oil. Data is the new oil. So you, have to, you need to have a lot of data before you get into AI business. And what more is that we have a private AI academy established in 2018. I was one of the students at that time. So thousands of engineers got trained year by year. So we have a data ready, people ready. And what else? We need technique. Uh, when mentioned about technique, uh, everyone, but everyone knows that a lot of uh, two chips making company, largest in the world. One is Samsung, the other one is TSMC. But TSMC is time based company. So we have a lot of chips related industry. So we can produce AI chip in Taiwan. And we have a special government agency named MODA, Ministry of Data Affairs. So we have uh, people, we have uh, technique, we have uh, data, and we have support from the government. Okay, when it comes to civil engineering, I'll talk about the application recent years. The first one is uh, uh, site inspection. And the, the second one will be early warning system. And the third one will be raw surface inspector one, okay. But there are a lot of application related to AI at this moment. For example, you can predict the air quality, but as a civil engineer, I think it's not a topic for me or for you. And we can predict a lot of, say, water quality, okay, we, we can upgrade the reservoir. So you can predict the rainfall. So you can estimate the when and the how much water to discharge in the next 48 hours. We have done this for our client, but I'm going to cover some of the, the outcome. Oops. Okay, the first one I'm going to share with you is the steel rebar inspection. We have a lot of construction sites, and, and the, the most frequently used material is concrete and rebar. <coughs> for the past uh, many years, uh, engineers need to check whether the rebar is prepared according to the code of, of regulation by, by human, by hand, with a ruler, with a hand, with a paper, with a pen. And you can only check part of the rebar because it, it's a lot of a, 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 a press to walk, walk around. So how can computer help to solve this problem? Of course, it's an image here. So the first thing you need to solve is to get a digital image. Okay, what we have done is we have a depth camera from Intel. It can take 3D camera, 3D image, the, the depth image with in the point cloud, point cloud format, and another image in RGB format. So what stored in computer is the 3D image with different color. The color shows the layer, the depth. So the, the, the blue one is the first layer. The, 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 the light one is the second layer. Okay, so it's, if, you, if you see this picture, you cannot tell the, the depth, the layers, but with 3D camera, you can, you can tell the, the depth. And with the image, you can have a, if you hire an AI engineer, he or she will tell you there are a lot of models you can use to get the image trend. So the model we use is a deep level, deep level, deep, deep level V3, and this is the the algorithm for that 
uh, algorithm. So uh, skip this one. The point is that with uh, this model, you can tell, you can you can find out what in the image. Here is the cat and the background. All we need to tell is the, the, where the theory bar is and the, the background. Okay. The, the story is you need to have an image and you need to label image. In order to in order, in order to label image, there are other things to do. You need to label the intersection and the where the rebinds. We label more than 100 images and we use 99 images in training and the 11 in validation. After a lot of steps, we have a we have a conclusion that the MIO, which means the correctness is about 0 0.786. It's good enough. Okay, so if you get another image and the computer can tell you where the rebar is in the, the joint. Okay, with, the, with this model, <coughs> you can get a new image and the computer will tell you where the rebar and the joint. But be careful, only the top layer, <laughs> layer one, not the inner layer. That's the problem we are facing. So when a new image taken from Intel camera, computer can really quickly find out the distance, the spacing between tyrannical and the vertical rebars. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, that's right. <coughs> okay. It's an AI, but it's an automatic inspection. Based on computer vision and the AI technology, this is the tool we made by hand. And the, not only the tool, but also UAV can be used as a camera. It's an old fashioned, old previous we used a paper to do examination on construction sites. But it's well, it's not efficient and it uh, takes a lot of evidence danger. <coughs> so we do have a steel scape data set built by ourselves and it can generate and uh, calculate the depth and the distance between rebars. And also we have uh, a blinder that can generate point the cloud from the steel rebar. And that's the, the real case we went uh, to get our photos with steel camera. This is how data labeled. We use a label me as a labeling tool. When data labeled and the model trend, you can use a camera to get the image on site and send it back to the server computer and get a measurement in no time. That's how it works with the Intel camera on construction site. Yeah, we are working on UAV uh, because a lot of uh, construction are hard to get there, so we use UAV. <coughs> I haven't mentioned that the diameter of the rebar can also be calculated with these algorithms. If you have a 3D camera, you can measure not only the spacing, the overlap lens, and also the diameter of the rebars. Oh, I did again. Another application is related to tunnel. 
there are a lot of tunnels in Taiwan, and uh, according to the regulation, tunnels need to be checked once every several years. Um, we are used to get a lot of image with a vehicle mounted with camera, and we get continuous image. For the uh, past years, engineers spent months in processing these images. Engineers need to label the, the crack and the part, the pit, according to the image, a human. With AI, we can detect and uh, identify where the crack is and where the pit is. The same process as previously mentioned is still scap. You need to label, you need to label pit, label crack, and also you need to label what is not a proper, say, shadow, and get that image into the AI model, have it trained. And when the model is, is well trained, and you get a new image, the model can generate a pre processed outcome in just a few minutes. So previously, engineers need to spend months in dealing with the images. Now AI can help. Another application is about the header warning in construction site. I'm not sure about uh, what happened in each country, but in Taiwan, it's very hot in summer. So when the temperature goes high and the humid gets high, it's not easy and, uh, for workers to work under the sun. So it is uh, important to have a warning system in the construction site showing the temperature and the humidity in a digital LCD display. But people need to check the, the temperature and the humidity back to the chart to see, oh, it's time to stop working. <laughs> it's by human. So it's we are not very friendly. So how can computer help? We have a weather record from the Central Weather Bureau and including the forecast for the next 24 hours. But the forecast is not so accurate because construction site is located everywhere in Taiwan. But the central the weather station is located sparsely. So we need to forecast by ourselves. We have a data regression with AI tool and we forecast for every construction site owned by us. And the under the left image shows that the actual weather and the forecast by computer. And the that line is the forecast by the government. <laughs> and it proves that our forecast is much accurate to the fact that the government project, pre predict. So at this moment, most, uh, I mean, all of our construction, construction sites can be aligned with this system through my notification. <laughs> So everyone know, oh, I got a line. Oh, it's time to stop working. You need, you don't have to check the chart and check the LCD display. Another warning system about the earthquake notification. According to the uh, regulation by our client, when an uh, earthquake magnitude more than four happens, we need to send engineer to the construction site to patrol, to inspect. But who knows how serious it is in your, in your construction site. You need to make a phone call, or even maybe it's in the late night. So the same process we went through the heat hazard, we use it in the earthquake notification. We have an earthquake record for the past, past years, and when a new earthquake can come, we can compute and estimate how serious it is in every construction site. And when it comes to magnitude more than four, we are sent out a line notification to engineers in that construction site. So you don't have to worry until you get a notification. Okay, here's the difference between two warning systems. The left one is for heat hazard 
there are a lot of uh, technique mentioned by a engineer say LST which is time related uh, uh, data processing and the cracking algorithm for uh, this such a like curve fitting and this one is a uh, uh, real data we called from the government <laughs> okay. as I mentioned the government is opened by the government and the sun warning system we developed in this year um, you sometimes you notice that uh, there are abnormalities in a construction site but nobody knows when or who who did it so can AI help because we we demand our engineers to take photos everything we have more than 100 construction site in Taiwan and each construction site is required to send more than 30 pictures every day. So we have 3,000 pictures every day, such like this. But these are only for archive, for, for record only, nothing to do with the AI or for further use. So we are thinking, since we have 3,000 images, what can we do with these, these images? So what we have done is uh, that we developed a handmade <coughs> detection system with AI. You know that AI can detect, detect a lot of things, say vehicle, or, or bus, or, or pedestrian. Now, AI can detect people with helmet or not. It's a public open, it's a public data set available from cargo. But it's for foreigners, not Chinese. Okay, so we have our local data set, and we even lo labeled the hamlet is from our company. So we can tell which hamlet is. This is the hamlet from our company, this is not. And something, sometimes we made, made a mistake. Say so here is a, a part, here is a cylinder, uh, but it's not a, a hamlet. So we need to train the model to get it correctly. Um, so every night we went, we go through the three thousand pictures and to pick out that abnormalities, and it's about uh, fifty pictures will be found every night, and the warnings will be issued to the to the construction site. For example, we have some pictures taken by engineers. And the, the rule is that some people are wearing helmets, some people are not. It's not normal. <laughs> and if we find a machine and the, some people are not wearing helmets, it's not normal. And here's a machine, but this one is not wearing a helmet, it's not normal. Okay. About 50 pictures will be found for, uh, for these normals. And we have sent out alarms through our PMS <coughs> system. So engineers need to deal with these problems. You need to answer whether this is a real case or not. You can get it solved in the next day. And we are thinking not only Hamlet, but a lot of things can be identified in the construction site, say the joint, the holder, the hook, <laughs> opening, opening in, in a building. We are still working on the items. Okay, the work I mentioned are all uh, realized by my company, <laughs> but also uh, not a lot of projects carried out by other companies. So I asked the, our peer, peers to give me an example. Here's the example by the CCI, and it's a Aerotropolis project. And it's a huge project. Um, the, the area for is a land development project. The land for underdevelopment is about uh, 1,756 hectares, and the cost for engineering for the construction cost is up to 1.8 billion US dollars. And the point is that we need to move in a lot of earth, the soil, to make it higher. So 11 million cubic meters will be moved in. If there are only one project, it's easy to deal. But there are 10 projects handled by 10 contractors. 
So we used to have a mass meeting, and everyone, everyone has their own plan. And finally, we decided to develop a land matching system. With this main matching system, there are another rules. Say, if you have a first to move out, so the nearest place need the work, so it, you can match. And the volume need to be considered. The dis moving distance and the time. So it's a it's another uh, predicted system. It's a rule based AI system. With this system, the AI movement can be optimized. And for for the mass meeting, there are a common understanding. You know, you know what move earth will be moved out from which site and what moves what earth will be moved in in your construction site. I have two slides for conclusion. We civil engineers are facing a lot of problems. <laughs> the first one is the shrinking birth rate. I'm, I'm also in charge of recruiting new graduates in Taiwan. I attended 11 uh, sessions for every uh, school. Yeah. We do have uh, that the graduates are really getting fewer. <laughs> And the population are getting old. <laughs> Less people are willing to work in the construction site. And also the infrastructure are getting aged. You need to be innovate. Um, everyone knows that uh, construction is a high risk work and low productivity. It takes time, it takes effort to change this situation. Uh, in this July, I went to Japan and I visited the Kojima. Uh, the Japan mentioned about I construction. I think it's a good solution. They have autonomous vehicle, uh, man, uh, 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 bulldozer without human, <laughs> remote controlled bulldozer. Um, they even have it worked in the construction of a, a reservoir. And this month, uh, Professor Chow went to Taiwan and showed us about the smart construction in your company. I think it's great. <laughs> I, he will show you that later. But in Taiwan, we do have our concern. We are working on construction automation, uh, especially in precast. Um, also, there are, there are some uh, fair cases in Taiwan, so we are trying to build a structure with uh, sensors. So the sensors will tell and we will record the health condition for each uh, construction, for each structure. I call, we call it smart structure. So when a structure complete, you can get a lot of data. As I mentioned in earlier, data is the new oil. So for each new construction, you need to have a, a lot of data collected from the, the construction. And finally, uh, I think challenges are also faced by engineers and the, uh, we can solve the problem and we can have a discussion later. Because no construction is alike. So the solution I provided may not fit your situation. Um, but there are too many uncertainties in civil so For example, there are a lot of earthquakes in Taiwan, but it's not a story maybe in, in Mongolia or so. But um, the same story is that it's hard to streamline uh, workflow for construction because uh, every construction is detailed, is, is, is detailed and uh, constructed in detail and with different people, different uh, machines. There are too many stakeholders, too many subcontracts. So it's really hard to have a unified tool to solve every problem. Still, we are very intensive. But the good news is that. <laughs> IT computer power is getting more, more and more powerful, and the data can be collected easier. If your government can re release uh, data to you, it will be easier to you to get data, or you can crawl the data by yourself. And the algorithm for AI is improves a lot. So as I mentioned, YOLO yeah. and creating a lot of uh, AI tools, and the uh, young people can use data digital tools in construction sites but not the, the uh, old engineers. They prefer to have a ruler, have a pen, have a paper. But many engineers, young engineers, are willing to use digital tools in construction site. So in our country, we are telling people to 
work as a civil engineer. And AI will not re replace civil engineer, but if you are a civil engineer, not only AI, you will be replaced by those who know AI. <laughs> so be careful. This concludes my talk today, and thank you for your time. So our previous speaker, Mr. Cho, uh, told us that he has a computer background. So we have a civil engineering background, right? So a similar thing what we are doing, we are trying to use the tools to make our predictions and visualizations better and make some calculations, I can say, which are difficult for humans to do it. Okay, so the content of presentation, I'm going to discuss about the introduction, uh, because uh, then the project overview and the TBM overview. In my presentation, I'm going to connect these two parts, like AI-aided smart solution for prediction, so I'm going through the prediction model, and the other one is I'm going to link AI with a VR-aided smart solution for visualization. This is what nowadays we are talking about the digital twin. Of course, this is just like a framework or solution. Of course, it's not practically imp implemented yet. And then uh, it's like application and the conclusion. So as you know that this is a uh, uh, 54% of the population live in the cities. And as you can see that, uh, this is a picture or graphic from United Nations report. You can see that, okay, North America and other countries, okay, the progress is, still there's a progress that the people are moving towards the urban areas. However, in Asia, which is like the most populated area, still there's a lot of people are moving towards the cities. So we are having a lot of urbanization. So always the rapid urbanization bring, uh, we have to use the space. So the underground space become a very important part. Even you see all the big met metropolitan cities, Beijing, even Seoul, you have a, almost like an underground city. So tunnels are now adopted all over the world to provide like multiple services for storage, transportation, even some uh, like community halls or opera or nuclear disposals. So with the progress of time, uh, you know, in civil engineering, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to make civil engineering as a manufacturing industry to improve our productivity. This is our goal when we talk about the, all the smart construction or the, all the smart technologies. So TBM, I think, is one of the first moving factory, right? So when we talk about the TBM, it's like a big um, moving factory. It become very famous because of its productivity. Like using the traditional methods, we can have a maximum productivity like 25 to 30 meters. With TBM, you can achieve up to 300 meters a day. So it is more, it's a very complex machine. And um, in general, we can call it like a tunnel production factory. Oh, generally were good for that type of data. So we have SVR and ANN uh, AI models, and we combine them both together to see the results. And we have a performance comparison for using R scale, RMS, and all these parameters. So okay, so this is like the data collection and the input parameters. So this is like a, a real screenshot of the TBM. You can see there's a lot of data. Even this is the rotation motors, which are like pushing the uh, the TBM forward. Even this rotation motors, the data can predict a lot of things in real time that how the operator is going to manipulate it. So similarly, uh, now this is in what we are going to have it. Now it's not completely, we have a machine. So machine has its own parameters and then there's a rock. So rock is nature. So in this, we are going to also have a rock and machine interaction. Through that, we are going to have an output. It can be either in penetration rate or advanced rate. Okay. So uh, when we try, 
we, we have developed the regression and predictive model. So with SVR, we, our R scale was 0.94. This was here on the x-axis, we have actual, and this is predicted. So we have the R scale. With ANN, it was 0.96. When we combine them, it was 0.9671. So we can say that either we use alone ANN or SVR and we combine both together, we, we have a good penetration rate or we can believe the results. Uh, similarly for advanced rate, uh, so considering that we believe that our prediction was um, prediction is in a well, um, reliable range. So this was just like a graphic user interface. What we think that in which the data is coming in real time. So there's a predicted data, and now there is a, a data which is coming in real time. So predicted data is compared with the real uh, with the data of which we are having the performance parameters. So it can tell us that how accurate our model is performing. Now, the second part, uh, which is the design part. So, so of course, we, we are doing this FEM analysis, cutter heart structure analysis, loads, and high beam 3D. Now, what was, we were, we were doing that. Now we have high precision uh, beam 3D cutter heart design. We can do that. But still, the problem is that there are a lot of different domains of engineering involved for the manufacturing of this unit. Now, there will be mechanical engineer, there will be civil engineer, there will be from electronics. So the communication on how they are all going to hybrid it. So to just as our proposal, we develop a, a virtual design assembly simulation in a VR engine, uh, in an immersive environment, in a game engine. So these are the different, so you can wear a handset and now you can train even the students or the company or, or even the people at the side. So they know that which part work and what part is going to have installation wear. So this is just as an example that when we talk about the digital twin, it means that it should be the replica of the real component. It means it's not like something like a BIM model which can have a difference layer. So you can make a, a physical virtual component or the physical component as same dimensions. Okay. Here is a screen recording of the virtual in, immersive virtual environment we develop. So this is for the design inspection. Now, this machine has not developed yet. So this is the design stage. But any of the engineer from any domain can still go and inspect the design. Maybe the geotechnical engineer or the civil engineer might not agree. They have a different design, but in 2D drawings, if I give, if someone give me still the electrical engineering drawings, it's so hard sometimes as a civil engineer to read that. But in a 3D visualization, we have a better visualization, right? So, so even we can, later we can integrate our AI parameters with components of the, uh, the TBM. Okay, so let's say we, we put the button, now start, so it start working, how it will work in real environment. Now we know we can, the engineer can inspect what's the, dif what's the distance between the different cutter head, the spacing, even this model is interactive. So even he can take out the, uh, the cutter head, uh, the cutter disc, like it can, it can, he can inspect it. Like he can, we, we are different, user manual the interface, so he's going, okay. From here, so this is like a interactive model. Pick the, in a 2D drawing, we cannot do that, look at this. So it's an immersive environment. He can take the, even the cutter disc out, inspect it, rotate in any direction. The, the, the second video is about the assembly simulation, like how we are going to assemble it. Of course, I just, for a short video, we are going to do the major components, like this for the training of the staff, like how you're going to assemble the different components, because there's a lot of time waste also assembling of the TBM, because the real manufacturers provide maybe not all the staff can move to the site. Okay, so, because of course, uh, now AI is quite developed, but still when we talk about the digital twin, it's in a development phase. So what 
I believe is that in future, of course, the AI is already there. We are using it. In future, we are going to have a digital twin. So it can optimize and it can help the engineers to make better decisions by prediction and visualization process. It provides um, these technologies, the smart technologies provide us a guideline to make our decisions and also better understanding. Like the previous, uh, the previous presentation, there was a 3D rebar. It's really hard, you know, when you are looking at a 2D, uh, 2D drawing, it's similar to that. So that's all from our presentation. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Uh, so another round of big hand, please. Okay, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Kang Kyuk Lee. He's a senior researcher at Korea Expressway Corporations. He's a member of KSC, and he's also a member of uh, TC30 which is uh, titled as Digital, Digital Technologies for Smart Contru Construction of uh, ASEC, Asian Civil Engineering Coordinating Council. So please welcome him with your big applause. Yeah. Hello, I'm, my name is Kang Hyuk Lee, and I'm a senior researcher of Center for Smart Construction Technology in Korea Expressway Corporation, and I'm uh, secretary of the TC30 ASET. So uh, uh, it's a it's a great honor to have this opportunity to give this presentation here today. I will talk about the uh, smart construction technology with uh, artificial intelligence for the highway construction. Uh, this is my contents of this presentation. First, I will overview the AI and construction industry. And second, I will introduce the uh, national R&D program in Korea for uh, smart construction technology. And finally, let me show you the AI AD technologies of the project we are developing now. Let's see the short movie clip of Avengers Age of Ultron. this video clip, uh, the Iron Man said he made uh, something terrible and Hulk asked them uh, it was artificial intelligence. Uh, in this movie, uh, the AI robot name is Ultron, made by AI and it is uh, described like destroyer in this movie. Uh, how, uh, I just want to ask you a simple question. Uh, how do uh, what do you think of that? Uh, it is possible to the AI robot can threat the human being. How do you think? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes right. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, maybe uh, he's uh, AI optimist, AI pessimist. Maybe uh, uh, the famous, uh, the most famous AI pessimist is. The uh, Elon Musk and uh, the most famous uh, AI optimist is uh, Mark Zuckerberg. And so they some uh, a few years ago they uh, some argue about that uh, problem. So actually, uh, <clears throat> I don't think uh, I'm a kind of AI optimist. So uh, AI cannot uh, dread human being. Because we just uh, AI just uh, operate only uh, we just uh, set the objective, I think. But I don't know the future. So in fact, comparing to construction industries, the IT industry is uh, very uh, fastly improving and changing. So that this kind of the discussion even comes out. How about the construction industry? 
uh, we uh, what uh, what's the topic of the uh, future of the uh, uh, construction industry? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> so uh, the, I think construction industry is the most largest industry in the world. However, the problem are low productivities and low profitability and lower digitalization even than agricultural industry. Because of this problem, the improvement of the, our construction industry is being too delayed. Actually, there are so many digital technologies it could use for the construction industry. As you can see in this slide, uh, such as robotics, big data, uh, 3D scanning, cl cloud, AL, VR, simulation beam, and so on. We just can use them to the, uh, uh, in the in, uh, construction industry. Uh, for example, with the BIM, building information modeling, we can handle lots of data with 3D shape of the infrastructure easily. And with the IoT, Internet of Things, we can remotely inspect the infrastructure like uh, bridge or tunnel and its members uh, to keep their safety. And with the robot, also, uh, uh, someday uh, it can uh, threat human beings, but the robotics, with the robotics, we can automatically design, construct, operate, and management of the infrastructure. Uh, in this, uh, with, the, this, with these technologies, artificial intelligence can make them more efficient and smarter. Uh, as you can see in this slide, artificial intelligence could be used for all life cycle of the infrastructure, uh, such as uh, procurement, manufacturing, design, construction, and operation and management pace. Uh, <clears throat> for example, in design, pre design pace, we can improve efficiency in planning and design using a generative design AI model. Uh, and in construction pace, construction pace, we can use real-time construction management and automated heavy equipment with machine guidance and machine control, MGMC. And also we can use them, uh, we can keep the construction safety from the, uh, from the dangerous things in construction site. In the cases, uh, in those cases, how we can use AI more uh, better and better better or more efficient. Uh, there are three key elements for AI development, as you can see in this slide. First of all, we need to, we need, uh, uh, we need to use the state-of-the-art AI algorithm. And second is the uh, high-performance computer computing power. Maybe uh, it's too expensive, maybe. And last one is the big data. Uh, when, uh, according to the Gartner 2012, they define three characteristics of big data, as you can see, uh, volume, uh, they, they are volume and vo volume, variety, and velocity. Uh, this is the definition of the big data as we uh, generally know it. Two years later, the Gartner defined big data again, and they add the characteristic to them, uh, which was value. In other words, not worthy data is not a big data anymore. Uh, even have uh, even that data have the three uh, characteristics. So, in my opinion and my experience, every analyst results from AI method and techniques uh, strongly strongly depends on data, even more than AI algorithm or computing power. And uh, these small changes from the Gartner gives the important messaging for improved uh, improvement of the, our construction industry. Thus, uh, the most important thing is the data, worthy data. And we need to collect much more worthy data from the uh, our construction industry and freely share to use, anybody can use. 
So we need to change it to be digitalized. Based on this important message, our center has been has, has defined the world of the smart construction uh, as follows in this slide. Smart construction is construction method or system of achieving automation of the constructing process, data-driven operation, and virtual construction by converging digital technologies such as AI, VR, BIM, also and so on, and in order to secure high productivity and safety from the construction stage to the ONM period. ONM period. For developing these smart construction technologies, the first step is being digitalized. It can be called digital transformation of construction. To develop the smart construction technologies, uh, we aim to uh, increase the productivity and reduce construction delays, ensure safety, construction safety, and pursue digital transformation. Uh, this is the goal and objective of both our R&D program, uh, our national R&D program, and our center as well. Fortunately, the world is changing now to help our goals. Uh, for example, in this slide, like in this slide, uh, the amount of the data is extremely increasing due to internet users, and every day lots of new technologies are being developed. So we just can use them. So with uh, with that data and new technology, we can reach the our goal to uh, more easily. And this slide shows our national pro R&D program uh, to successfully complete our R&D program. Uh, 180 million US dollar has been invested, and about. Uh, 1,100 researchers are working in this program for the uh, for uh, develop of the technologies. In this R&D program, there are four groups studying on earthwork automation and structural construction automation and prepad and smart construction safety and data platform and testbed. We are developing 29 technologies.